messages via satellite. So if you got a 14, iPhone 14 or later, um, you can stay connected with your family and friends over iMessage or SMS without cellular or Wi-Fi. So it's via via satellite. I imagine this will be useful for your uh, your hikes, Will. Off yeah, the, absolutely. Yeah, not going to be not going to be too lost anymore. I don't think. Um, um, but yeah, it keeps you connected in the remote regions, which is. I awesome. think a great segue into updates for maps and offline downloads mm-hmm. and saved hikes. Will you want to jump in? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the maps, like new tiny features are actually some of the best i think personally for me anyway um uh, so the offline download specific areas is uh, pretty great so let's say you live in the middle of nowhere um or you're going on a trip to the middle of nowhere you're going to go and do some hiking you know that the signal is going to be pretty weak and you don't want to open up the apple maps app and then have that kind of like gray loading screen and nothing's loading. So yeah. you don't know where you are. Um, you can actually pre-download an area of a map. So mm. you would just move to the area in Apple Maps, you just pinch to the area you want. Um, you can then download that region. Um, I think it's a minimum of uh, it's like 20 kilometers as a minimum area. Um, and then there's a bigger area or something like that. There's a, there's a minimum area distance that it can download. Um, and then you can also save uh, your routes. So routes has got a bit of a change. Um, if you're doing a walking route or a hiking route, um, you can add place markers along the route that you want to go on. So long gone are the days where it decides where you're walking um, based off of its efficiency. Um, you can actually choose to go on a longer hike if you want to take a scenic route. Um, and you can also add some extra functions in. So you can loop back on yourself. Um, you can go to the end and turn back and it will calculate all of that for you. Um, and then you can save those. So um, if you're planning a trip in advance and you want to go, oh, I know that I need to get to the top of this mountain and then I want to go all the way along that ridge to the other end, um, you can make that happen rather than just kind of like hoping for the best. It's kind of crazy to think that that okay. wasn't available until now. It is a bit, but it, it's working really smoothly. So like I've been using it a bit and it's it's a very nice UI to use. Um, so it makes me think that they've been working and making sure that it's right before yeah, they release it. Fair, fair, fair. Um, moving to mail. So this is currently in beta. Um, it's on device categorization of your messages. Um, and it could be uh, primary uh, category inclusions for, uh, for, for most of your essential emails, but also um, time, time sensitive. So uh, getting lost in all of the mail that's coming through, whether it's like, you know, newsletters or promos or, mm. um, but then buried in there could be something really important, like a bill or uh, a notice or, or even a, a loved one who's trying to reach out. Um, these uh, categories um, can be uh, automatically uh, done um, and then therefore bringing the stuff that's most important to you to the top. Uh, and then being able to then, once you've sorted those out, you could go into the, the separate categories uh, at your leisure. This is in beta and uh, won't be out until, do we yeah, know when? It's a little bit later in the year, I think. Yeah, isn't yeah, yeah. It? And again, it ties in with um, Apple Intelligence as well. Oh, big time. Using that. So um, it will take a little bit longer to come out, but I don't think there's an actual date I wonder, if they're, later. I wonder if they're related, as in like, Apple intelligence and this feature? Is there, is there any correlation? I or? think maybe the categories part is actually using Apple intelligence. Of, yeah. So I think that's why it is later. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I could be wrong. But um, yeah, it's it'll, it'll be a good change, I think, for the mail app, especially in the search functionality yeah. as well, because I know a lot of people can struggle with that sometimes. Um, and obviously for businesses too, um, yeah. it'll make, make your life a little bit easier. And then the last one I want to shout out is the good old faithful calculator. Now, Math Notes is <laughs> Math Notes is is kind of uh, you know maybe for for some uh, you know might not mean much, but for for the ones in right in maths, whether they when they're learning, um, they're able to pretty much write out these equations and it will understand what it is and then give you uh, those results in real time. It's quite uh, it's quite amazing if you get a chance to see it. Uh, that is available on both iPad OS and iOS. Um, I'll also touch on a little nugget 
which I discovered, which was conversions. You can do conversions inside the calculator app. So that includes, uh, where, what is it? Uh, it was uh, angle, area, currency, data, energy, force, fuel, length, power, pressure, speed, temperature, time, volume, and weight. It's pretty cool. Wow. Uh, all on device um, with the exception of maybe currency. They probably go out to the to the internet to get to get the up to up to date info on that. But super cool. That's something that I'm sure everyone will find a use for. Um, and again, just a testament to those ongoing improvements um, in the back end. I was just going to jump in and, and call out the one of the business uh, functions, which I think is going to be really great for developers, um, yeah. which is the iPhone mirroring. Uh, mm. So being able to have your actual phone that might be locked in your bag or even in your pocket and you're just too lazy to get it out of your pocket. It's uh, an app on Mac OS. You click into it. Um, it'll load up your iPhone. Um, this, uh, I think, is only working if you're signed into iCloud on both devices. Um, it's using uh, some of the functionality that SharePlay and AirPlay use. Um, and then you can literally go scrolling through your phone like it's in your hand, but using Mac. So you can use all of your iPhone apps. You can access stuff on there. Um, it's a bit like, you remember Sidecar? I've used Sidecar a few times. Yeah, yeah. Put your iPad next to your Mac. You can use them both simultaneously with the cursor. A bit like that, but you can also have your phone on screen now, which is pretty cool. And when you get your phone out, it's not like it's actively doing something. Um, it's still locked in your pocket. So um, there's no like false touches or anything like that. Um, but I can see this being really good for developers. So having them connected into the phone and uh, throwing a new app design out there just to see how it hits and then going and using it. It's pretty cool. I'm excited to see how that what that might translate like uh, for the regular user in real life. It might, I mean, you know, I've, well, I think we've all been in a situation where you get pinged on your phone and then you pause what you, whatever you're doing. Yeah. You, you, you're, you're bending over, you're grabbing your phone, you're, you're you know, replying, whatever it is, and then you, you've done that, you go back to where you were. So if this, uh, while well, you're still getting interrupted and probably for good reason, mm -hmm. but if it's, if you're able to do it right on the device, see the alert come up, address it, and then get back to it. That's just a, yeah. uh, you know, way to streamline things. I don't know okay. about you. Mm. I don't know about you, but that's not the way it works for me. Like I, if I get a notification on my phone, I get my phone out of my pocket. I go to the notification, view it. I might reply. Who knows? Um, and then I immediately go scrolling through other applications <laughs> and I forget that I'm, I'm supposed to be like doing that. something. So, like, that's where I see it being useful. Is that I'll have it on screen, I'll do something, and then I go right. I'm, my, my work is staring at yeah. me. I need to get back to it. You so you just hit it. the X and you get back to work. Cool. So I think that's it from Nico, myself, and Will up in Sydney for iOS 18. So this will be out September 17th. That's right. So really soon. Super exciting. Seven days to be exact from today's date. One week. Yeah. Um, and if you want to know more. Uh, just contact us here at Mac Center. We'll be happy to go through each and every feature. I'm sure each one of us will probably talk your ear off about something. Um, but yeah, just reach out. Cool. cool. Sweet. See you guys. guys. Bye. Bye.